Hey guys, we're back for some more standard, and I wanted to make kind of a little bit of an update to the deck. i um, really been enjoying it, and just a couple changes here before we kind of get into some games. First of all, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you, and if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend, see if they want it. Uh, subscribe to my channel as well, and maybe leave a comment or a like if you do like it. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for your support. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you guys. So with the kind of um, high land count mono white humans deck, um, it's just been doing great. And I really like sort of where the creatures are at. I did want to sort of follow one of my, um, well, one of your comments actually, where you guys mentioned to try out Intrepid Adversary just because we'll have access to more mana. And so I did make that change. I took out two copies of Kellen to put in two copies of Intrepid Adversary, which I feel like, um, even though Kellen is a fantastic card, um, it's really great for getting card advantage. Intrepid Adversary is a bit more kind of focused on, you know, being aggressive, has a slightly more aggressive stat line and pumping out the team. So happy to try that out. Um, what I also found was that I actually had trouble having enough um, white mana because there were four copies of Myrix, four copies of Mishra's Foundry, and four copies of Cavern of Souls, um, which are great, and they're fantastic lands, but I found that the deck really couldn't actually support this many um, non-color-producing you know, lands. So I was running into issues like casting a ganjo for the channel cost, um, using recruitment officer even for a single white, you know, or using the adversary. I found that I could play the adversary, but I had like eight lands in play, none of which produced white mana, and so I couldn't pump my creatures. And so I decided to shift uh, down to two copies of Mirix, and I upped the plane count by two. So we're going to see if that's going to be a good enough fix, but you know, just kind of pay attention to it, see what kind of works for you. Um, all that said, let's go ahead and jump into some games. I haven't had a lot of time, unfortunately, to play on ladder. Um, there's been kind of something um, with my tablet where, for whatever reason, if I'll get into a game on ladder, it'll just kick me out. And um, yeah, I don't know if it's a bad connection of a new client, but um, basically that just leaves me with less time to record and then prepare videos. So. Um, I've got to do all my games here at home on my PC. Um, yeah, this hand looks great. Let's go ahead and keep it. But I'm curious if you guys are trying this out. You know, what I will say is having access to four copies of Viganjo is really, really nice, especially in control matchups. Um, yeah, there have been games I've won against blue-white control that I couldn't have won any other way. So that was cool. Okay, so opponent here, you're just really thinking a lot about his opening keep maybe. Who knows? But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I like um, kind of how the creatures are slotting in. All the creatures feel like they've got a good role. Um, all the extra lands make a novice inspector that much better, recruitment officer that much better. So it just all feels good. And I think we'll lead out here with officer just against an unknown opponent here. For that extra point of damage just right off the bat is always nice. Okay. Now we could go for like creature creature to try to set up for knight errant, but against blue white. I'd much rather just get Athalia going. So I'll attack first here, I think. I suppose I could even... We could even play it just to... Um, remove the likelihood of them being able to kill our, two, our one drop here. If they have, like, Elspeth Smite or something like that. Just start taxing immediately. And now, since we can get underneath No More Lies, thanks to Thalia... We can just go ahead and play out our Knight Errant here, which seems just great. Um, we'll get a little bit of life here. It doesn't really matter too much. I don't have all the mana to crack these clues right away anyways. So 
happy to lead out here with veteran and we can do like a full play out here and just try to push as much damage as possible we could also hold back here and just do like a search for three but i think i'm going to go the, the full way i suppose the downside here is that if they have a way of dealing with thalia and go into like temporary lockdown it is pretty rough so that is one possible downside here of this but i think i'm going to go for it Okay, double Adeline is at least a nice backup if they do end up getting rid of the board. Okay, and there's an Iganjo. Um, we could drop the Adeline here. I think I want to start working on some of these clue tokens in case they do actually have the uh, temporary lockdown, which would just knock out most of our board. Um, on the other hand, getting an Adeline down would at least leave an Adeline on the field, which is kind of nice. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll lead out with Adeline here, actually, for that reason. I can see kind of going both directions here. Yeah, they could have the No More Lies, but we've got a second Adeline ready. If they do have temporary lockdown next turn, it is definitely going to suck. And I think we hold the Aganjo in case they end up having um, like a Restless Anchorage or something like that for potential future turns. So this is a big turn if they have the lockdown or no. I guess not. And I think definitely sometimes against Blue White Control, like I get caught up in trying to be too cautious and then end up giving away games that I could have won just by pushing everything out there and just trying to go pedal to the metal as much as possible. And, and that's hard, right? Because it's like if they have the board wipe, they just get you. But you might only have like a small window of time before they have the inevitable sunfall come down. So it's like if they haven't got locked down, you can just, you know, yeah. Anyways, this hand looks great. We'll lead out here with Officer. Try to get that extra point of damage in if possible. And here I guess let's get the Foundry going. Uh, we'll attack first just to see if they want to use any removal. Okay, so they've got the removal for our officer, but at least we can still attack here and get Adeline going. And then we just want to try to play Thalia before they have access to like five mana for deadly cover up or um, Gix's command. So it's nice that we have the Inspector here in case they have like Liliana. They can't just cleanly get rid of our Adeline. Okay, and luckily here we do have another Adeline ready to go. And I think they probably are going to be... Hoping to drop like shield root or something like that next turn. Let's just get Adeline going. Uh, we can get the Ganjo down. I suppose we could hold it in case they have, if we want to be able to like keep attacking. But I think it's fine just to get the extra creatures down. We do have four copies and just all the extra damage I think just matters enough.
that was a, a little sloppy. I should have maybe attacked first before playing the creatures there, but uh, yeah. Okay, and immediately punished for playing the Aganjo. So <laughs> unfortunately now we don't have the Aganjo to deal with our Preacher. Forgot about Preacher. But I think this is fine. Like we still just push in with everything. Um, they're stuck on land, so I'm not worried about Thalia just immediately here. We can play Inspector and then get Foundry going and just keep pushing. I think I like that over just trying to clack, uh, crack clues here. Just try to get aggressive as possible. Yeah, they almost certainly trade with the Adeline there for sure. I guess there is a possibility they could have um, like the three mana board wipe for creatures two or less. So that is a possibility. So they're at nine. I definitely, I, I like Knight Aaron of Eos here. We could just take a turn off and just like play every, everything out in our hand. That's probably still fine. Otherwise we get Mishra's Foundry going and we push I think this is a good enough sequence, though, that we want to do this instead. And I think we maybe get in with these two. Don't give them the easy trade here. Although, I mean... I guess I'm okay with trading officer for their sleeper. So maybe we get in with two creatures and then just go for like the search for three. We could also just push for the full five here. I think I'm actually okay with that too. And then play out even more creatures. This gives us like the chance of like getting another knight errant. Yeah, copper coat is sweet and so is adversary. Now we've got like a big next turn here. Can push for a lot. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Uh, Path of Peril, I think that's the other one they, they could have had to maybe do like a mini board wipe. But yeah, I'm going to try to get some time in, hopefully this week, to grind a bit. I haven't had enough time to really devote to just trying to ladder up. Um, but yeah, it's not for a lack of this deck doing well. This is definitely a great deck. Let's see, we got a hello. Maybe one of my viewers, that'd be so cool. It's always nice when I see someone who, you know, says hello or just, you know, it's it just makes me feel good for sure. So if you do see me, you know, in a game, just yeah, I'll say hello. All right. Um, I guess I'm okay leading out here with, like, we could go. Let's get Veteran going. The life always does help a little bit. Oh, okay, so they're going for the combo deck. Well, our best answer to combo is Thalia, and so we definitely shouldn't waste any time. Yeah, and speaking of not wasting any time, I think the best play here is to just get Adeline going.
There's the Conspiracy Unraveler. Okay, we're almost out of time. So I guess we just go... We could do like Warden plus Novice Inspector. Could go Adversary, but we're not able to pump, which is unfortunate. Otherwise, I guess, yeah, it's, it's functionally the same, playing creatures out or just making a foundry, except creatures help us out for next turn, so that's good. I think maybe we just go Warden plus Inspector, then we're hitting for six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12. Not quite enough. So we get them down to three, unless they've got something here. Unfortunately, they had the removal for Thalia, which definitely hurts a ton because they're going to be able to go off next turn then. Looking for another Thalia stat. <laughs> May not matter, but we got to at least try for it. Guess they just didn't get the land or didn't have the reenact. All right, well, yeah, happy with this little run, 3-0, and and then let's take a look at the uh, overall stats here, too. All right, it took a minute for it to load here, but yeah, we uh, are currently 7-0, and 100% uh, win rate, so really happy with the deck so far, um, and more to come. Yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow.